going to get a clear understanding on the writings of the Apostle Paul versus the commands of the Holy Savior. The Christian, do not keep the commandments. Obey only the Apostle Paul. Use the death of Christ to justify their disobedience to the Most High God. If you say the law is dead, you're being disobedient to God. You refuse to keep his laws, statutes, and commandments. And you copycat and obey the doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church. You say that Christ is a white man. You say that God is white. So look at here, Romans chapter 10, verse 4. This is for you Christians. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And then you close the Bible. You see? You see? You see? But then right here in John 14, 15, the New Testament, because that's the first thing you guys like to say, well, that's the Old Testament. Well, no, right here, John is the New Testament. This is what Jesus, that's what you guys like to call him. His name is Yahawasha. Yahawasha said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Have we talked about how the law stirs up sin. We looked at that. So if we Christians hope for victory over sin, we shouldn't have any relationship with the law, not even the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Not even a big ten. Oh, I know that's just freaking your tradition. So you're transgressing the law. The book of First John, chapter three, verse four: Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Whosoever committeth sin transgress also the law. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. He said, you have to follow the commandments. Let's go to the scripture that a lot of heathens love to use in these Christian churches. Let me get the book of Romans chapter 10 verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Now, look at number four. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. The law that is dead is the law of sacrifice. So when it comes down to the sacrificial laws and how they are over, let's get that in the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 through 10. Read. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast no, had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and burnt offering, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then he, then said he, Lo, I will, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The sacrificial law, folks. The Lord no longer had pleasure in animal sacrifices. So he sent his son to redeem his people from the curse of the death of the law. What is the grace? What's the grace of Yahweh? Teaching us 
denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. That's what the grace is. What's the idol for some of you people? You worship Caesar Borgia. This is a painting of Caesar A. Borgia, the man who influenced all European paintings, sculptures, and carvings of Ushaya. Many scholars believe the image of Ushaya has been manipulated, askewed, and outright fabricated throughout history. Caesar A. Borgia was the son of Pope Alexander VI. Pope Alexander VI was known for having multiple mistresses and in 1476 bore a son named Caesar A. Borgia. Caesar A. was the favorite son, and by the age of 15, he had already become the Bishop of Pamplona. By his 18th birthday, he had become a cardinal. The image of Ushaya was that of the Muslim and the church was having a hard time selling its ideologies in the region. Some say they devised a plan to correct this issue and used Caesar A. Borgia as its tool. Consequently, the Pope came up with a plan to have every painting of the original Messiah destroyed. Next, Alexander VI commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to reinvent Ushaya in the image of his own beloved son, Caesar A. Borgia. Between 1502 and 1503, he employed Leonardo da Vinci as a military architect and engineer in which him and Leonardo da Vinci became intimate instantaneously. They were lovers. To express his love towards Caesare, Leonardo painted many pictures of him. Caesare had sex with his own sister Lucrezia, and he killed his brother Giovanni in 1497, and this is the man whom the Catholic Church gave their consent to allowing his picture to be put up and portrayed as Yashaya Christ to deceive the whole world to think Christ was European. See what the original King James Bible of 1611 had the apocryphal in it, but in 1928 under the Vatican, they made an agreement to take 14 books out of the King James Holy Bible. Why you might ask? Well because thousands of years before they put this image up to be Christ, they found out that it was written of in the wisdom of Solomon located in the apocryphal, that they would do this and the reason for it. So knowing this was written of in the wisdom of Solomon, the Roman Catholic Church took it out of the Bible so the people wouldn't figure out their deception. It is a noted fact that when they did this, they knew exactly what Christ people really looked like. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. What, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. That's for you Christian pastors. He shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. It didn't say you was making it. It said you was going to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them. The Lord said that you have to do the commandments and you have to teach them. The book of Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. And he says, If you want eternal life, keep the commandment. The Lord said that if you love him, you're going to keep his commandment. Paul's writings were very confusing to understand because what the Gentiles as well as Israelites were getting from Paul was that they no longer had to follow the customs of the Most High God. And that bothered the apostles. So they had to get on Paul. And we can get that account. 
in the book of Acts, chapter 21, verse 21. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 21, verse 21. And they are informed of thee, that thou teachest all the Jews which are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, saying that they ought not to circumcise their children, neither to walk after their, their customs. What is it, therefore, the multitude must needs come together, for they will hear that thou art come. Do, therefore, this day we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. Them take and purify them, thyself with them, and be at charges with them, that they may shave their heads, and all may know that those things were, uh, whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that thou thyself also walkest orderly and keepest the law. So right here, the apostles got on Paul for teaching people not to keep the law. So they made Paul take the vow of the Nazarenes to show subjection to the Lord. He had to take this vow to make sure to show that he was living orderly, that he was walking orderly and that he kept the law. See right here, even where it says, where it says there were four men, do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them. So they have four men that had the vow of the Nazarites on them. Take them. That's what it says. It says them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them, meaning pay their expenses that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing. That they know that what you were saying, Paul, are nothing. That you, as well as everyone, must keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. But know this to be true. The law is not for the righteous. The law is for you sinner is knowing this that the law is not made for the righteous right but let's see who was made for it. the lawless disobedient ungodly and for sinners for unholy and profane for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers for man slayers these are killers for whoremongers if you are a man who sleeps with a lot of women you are a whoremonger. If you are a woman who sleeps with a lot of men, you are a whore. It says, for them who defile themselves with mankind, sodomites, gay people, homosexuals, lesbians, the alphabet crew. And it says, for men stealers, people who kidnap, Oh, and here's the here's a classic one for a lot of you people who do this every day, all day. Liars. If you are a liar, you ain't getting in. For perjured persons, people who swear, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth and sit up there on the stand lying all day. I put that on my mama and lying all day. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 12. And had a wall great and high, and had 12 gates, and at the gates 12 angels, and names written thereon which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Understand this thing. Heaven, also known as New Jerusalem, is only for the children of Israel. Ouch! I know that stunk. The Messiah said that you must keep the commandments. And with that, shalom. 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 Shalom.